everyone and welcome to today's lesson. I am Mrs. Swart and I'll be taking you through today's lesson on summary. This is part one. The next lesson will be a formal academic summary, but it's really interesting to see what exactly we mean when we look at something like a summary and it's something that you can practice. So we'd like to you to remember that at the end of this lesson, we are going to have a quiz and you can test yourself. So what is a summary? When something is presented as a summary, it's brief, it's short. It's also known as a synopsis or a praises. And when you get names like that, then you suddenly think you don't know what a summary is, but you do know what it is. And it's so easy to do. Summarizing is a shortened version of something that has happened, something that is happening. It could be a shortened version of a book or a film. If someone asks you about a book you read, you aren't going to tell them the whole book from beginning to end. You're going to give them a shortened version of it. It's a skill that will also help you to make sure that you can study much easier. So we're going to look at something called mnemonic devices. And you'll see it's actually spelled MN, but we can use these mnemonic devices to make sure that it's easier to remember some facts that we might struggle with. But we'll look at that just now. And that is why we can't look at the academic summary in detail today. So. At school, we do the traditional academic summary. We do a seven point summary for first additional language in point form and for home language in paragraph form. And of course, you are told to use your own words, which makes it exceptionally difficult. Now, to use your own words in this case doesn't mean that you have to write synonyms for everything. All they want you to do here is to maybe change. Um, if it says the man to change it to the pronoun he, so that it's different. It's not the same as plagiarism when you have something where you have to, or where you want to retell something. You can't just take a story like the Harry Potter book and change Harry Potter to he everywhere and say, oh, I've now changed it. That's not the same thing. With this summary, it's slightly different. The rules are a little bit different. So we don't want you to become confused and think, oh, you know, I have to change every single word to my own. You will be supplied with a topic which is as far as possible. So you're going to tweak and change things here and there. And really, these are 10 easy marks that you should get. Or you should at least get seven out of 10 for the facts that you're going to give. Okay, so I want us to look at our Another way of summarizing, this is an interesting one, it's mnemonic devices. And it's a technique we use when we want to summarize something to make sure we remember the facts. So you want to remember the points on a compass. Now you look at this, it's okay. It's north, west, east, and south. But you might get confused. When I was in primary school, our teacher taught us, now we shall eat. And you went around. A compass doing that. It's a rhyme to help you remember more information. That's what a mnemonic device is. It's very handy to know. And if you have a long list of things to remember, it's going to be great to help you with that. So this one's one of my favorite. Okay, I hear some of you are telling me that Pluto is no longer seen as a planet, but shh, that's um, for the geography and the social science people. This is a mnemonic device, and I have two of them here to help you remember the order in which your planets occur. And there's a picture to help you as well. My very easy method just speeds up naming planets. My is for Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Something else you'll notice is Earth is the third planet from the sun. Some of you will have heard your parents say, I remember watching a program called Third Rock from the Sun. So if you're not sure where we are, remember we're the third rock from the sun. There's another one as well you could use. So you're going to remember whichever one makes it is easier for you to remember. My very excellent mom just served us noodles. And you'll notice each of the first letters of every word is 
capitalized and it's in bold and with a little block around it so that you can remember the order. And that's where your mnemonic devices come in so handy. It helps you to remember facts, but you have to practice it. Otherwise, you'll learn this rhyme and you're, when you finish, you're going to say, ah, mm, I can't remember <laughs> what I have to remember. So it's something you're going to practice and get perfect. Okay, so let's see. Summarizing, if you tell us about your favorite book that you've read or your favorite film that to date, it's going to be a summary. You're going to give us most important facts, the highlights, the most important things that you remember or think about this book. If we look at things like books, there could be characters, plot, setting, characterization. You could use Freitas Pyramid. That will help you for the yeah. idea of exactly how you will um, how you will explain or summarize the book. If you have to study for literature, then to know the characters, plot, setting, all of those things are going to come in so handy because you're going to remember everything better. You will only write down the most important facts, and that is what a summary is about. If you think of the following question, ask yourself, what did you do at school today? Yeah, we have a girl playing soccer, but do you think that's all she did at school today? I don't think so. I think she went to school. She then attended classes. After she'd attended classes and did her homework, she went to play soccer at school and things like that. Okay, so let's have a look here. When you report on your, um, your summary here, you can't just answer with a phrase. You can't just say the little girl played happily. You have to give the you can't say the little girl because then you have a subject and no verb. And played happily, it's a verb but no subject. And if there's no verb, it's an incomplete sentence. If there's no subject, it's an incomplete sentence. Always use full sentences. It's not the examiner's duty to fill in the gaps for you. You have to fill it in. You have to tell the examiner what it is. So remember that. And it's, remember what I said about the summary of your day. Go and write down what did you do today. Maybe you saw your friend or your friend was absent and that is something you remember about today. Now I want you to go and practice this. Practice makes perfect. Click on the link below to complete the quiz. Then when you've done that, you'll be able to see, hmm, okay, I didn't quite understand what a summary is about. Because, yeah, you're not doing the summary as such. You are looking at the facts about the summary so that you're clear on what you have to do. There is the QR code so that if you want to, um, if you want to click on the QR code, then you can do that and you can find out exactly what it is you have to do. So I'd like to thank you for being with me today and hope that you have a wonderful afternoon and that you have great success with your quiz. Thank you.